I think the light bulb that went off for me was that I just didn't want to fuck around anymore. I don't, that to me is regret, right? Is feeling like there's so many things that I could have done that I could have taken all these risks and tried these things and maybe failed, maybe succeeded, but I could have gone out there and I could have experienced it. And so to come to the end of my life and realize that I didn't have the balls to do it, that's regret. And I don't want to live my life with regrets. No fake shit against me shall prosper. Yes, I came, I saw, I conquered. No fake shit against me shall prosper. Yes, I came, I You are now tuned into the James Grage Theory. Episode 10, Overcoming Adversity. Okay. I think this is going to be a really good one. Um, you know, I, we've been doing this for a couple months now, and the comments we we both read all the comments and you see all the things like well you know it seems like james you know doesn't really go in not that you don't go through anything i think people know some of your story but that this comes easy to you like all of this comes easy to you and that you have the life you know this was you set the path and this has been a long time coming Mm -hmm. well i think you know a lot of people don't know about a lot of the adversities you've gone through and i don't think you'd be the person you are now without those adversities so they come they kind of come hand in hand but i think you're like adversity driven almost in in some ways you know what i mean a lot of what you've yeah. accomplished i don't think you would have without some of the those adversities it's not necessarily that i'm driven by him but i embrace him and i think that's been one of the things that's really helped me in my life is not being afraid of adversity or afraid of obstacles or failures just knowing that they're an essential part of the success equation that that's where i've learned all the best lessons in my life and in business is through mistakes right seeing what i can extract out of them and and that's really shaped who i am as a person it shaped this business and so when people ask me if i have regrets in my life i say no and people ask me how could that be how could you not regret any of the mistakes in your life or any of the things that have happened right and i say because it's shaped who i am today and i like who i am so if i were to change any one of those events then potentially i'd be changing who i am as a person yeah well you know i mean look the funny thing is when I was really young, I don't, I don't think I saw them as adversities. It was just my life, right? When you're a kid, you're, you're not really comparing yourself to other people. You know, your world is your world. And, uh, but growing up, I would say that I was really independent out of necessity. And that's just because my parents were kind of just doing their own thing. And so I was the kid who had to wake himself up in the morning and go make myself breakfast and pack my own lunch and, you know, get on my bicycle and ride. What would, what would happen if you didn't do all that? Well, I mean, if, if I didn't do that, then I'd be, you know, noon would roll around and my parents would walk in and say, why aren't you at school? <laughs> yeah. So I, it was just kind of what I had to do. And, but I didn't think much of it. Uh, But it certainly probably shaped who I am today, just being very independent. You and I did a personality test the other day, a business personality test. And I think that's one of the things that showed immediately is that usually I prefer to work in my own space. You know, I work well that way. But, uh, you know, so for me to to learn to work with others is, is taking a little bit of time and patience. Otherwise, I can come off as being overly demanding or forceful. Because everybody thinks like, hey, James Gray's this perfect figure, you know, in some way he does everything right. No, wrong. I've, no, no, I've, I've done a lot wrong. Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I think a, one that I can think of, you know, we talk about adversities. To me, an adversity is when you really feel like you, you hit a low point uh, where you feel hopeless. That's a low feeling. And I felt that way a couple times in my life. I think the first time I felt that way. And it was definitely a low point for me. Uh, at that point in my life, it, it was the lowest I ever felt. And I want to say it was probably about 18. I'd moved out uh, when I was, I think I'd just turned 17. I was a, a junior in high school. And, uh, you know, I'd gotten straight A's in school for the most part. Was a good student, although I, I really wasn't that interested in school. Had a hard time holding my attention met a girl she was 21 she was competing in miss california beauty pageant so of course you know i was just totally enamored with her being you know 16 17 years old and uh 
she lived about two hours away. So I would just disappear. I would hop on a Greyhound bus in the middle of the night and disappear for a week, which isn't so good for uh, your grades. Yeah. I you know, your, your, your school your, is your, your, your scholastic, you know, career. I don't know how many extra credit points you get for chasing a hot 21 year old across the state. <laughs> yeah. I got some, I got some, you know, credit with my friends, but, uh, it wasn't doing much for my future. And, uh, so this went on for a while. And, uh, so it got to the point where a guidance counselor called me in and said, look, you, you've got to make a decision here, what you're going to do. You're either going to flunk out of high school or you've got to do something, get your act together. Ship, shape up or ship out. Yeah, pretty much. And at the time, I just, you know, that wasn't enough of a wake-up call for me to get back on track. So what I ended up doing was in California, they had a an examination that you could take. And if you could pass that, if you were still enrolled in high school, and if you could pass that, then you could graduate and you could get a diploma. And so I did that and moved out. You know, that was fun. Dated the girl, had a lot of fun. And then, you know, she and I broke up. And all of a sudden, I realized, what had I done? You know, what kind of mess had I created for myself? And so then I watched all my friends graduate high school and go off to college and pursue their goals and, you know, do all the things that, you know, they had planned on doing for the past couple of years. And here I felt like I had no path, no sense of hope. George is on here commenting. George, we just, she was hot. <laughs> she was hot. And he's a, he was probably right in the middle of this whole story, too. Yeah, so, so, up, George? so anyone listening, George is, uh, he and I have been friends since we were 10 years old. And he watched me go through this. He watched me, you know, uh, you know, women have always been uh, my downfall. <laughs> and uh, so, and it started young. But uh, yeah, so I felt really lost. I felt like I just made a lot of mistakes and I didn't really know how to see my way out of that. And, uh, at that point I ended up moving back home. So here I was living in this back bedroom in my mom's house. All my friends are off to college and here I just felt like I made a mess of my life and I just felt down, down. And I just, I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. At that point, I realized that my biggest obstacle really wasn't some outside force it was it was in me i realized that you know i had made some mistakes and that the road ahead of me was going to be probably harder it wasn't this clear-cut path like my friends that now we're going to go to college and then get their degree and they'll mm-hmm. go get a job and it was pretty clear cut for them where they were going for me i had no idea where i was going but i knew that as long as i didn't let that hold me down i knew that i could still create something for myself but that was a really tough thing. I'm not going to say that it was easy like I just popped out of it. I didn't. It was years and years of struggle, of self-doubt, of feeling like, hey, I, I, you know, I don't have a degree. I don't, you know, I don't have this foundation that everyone else has. Safety nets. I had zero safety nets. And in a way, that probably ended up helping me because I couldn't afford to fall, right? I was, I was going to keep climbing no matter what. I don't think I've ever felt suicidal before, but that's the closest I ever came where I think that's what that feels like when you feel like you don't have a way out, where just, you know, ending your life is your only escape. That's low, man. You get low from that. I mean, that's... um, And I I felt close to that. Yeah. I felt close to that. Where you just don't have anybody. You don't have that next... I mean, you're talking about, you know, all your friends had this certain path to... You didn't even have what's next. So... What I ended up doing was it was a bit of problem solving. I looked at my situation at the time. It sucked. I didn't have a job, you know, high school dropout. I didn't have a car. I didn't have any savings. I didn't have anything going for me at the time. And I remember someone telling me a story about someone they knew going to work in the in Bahamas and the Mediterranean, going to work for this all inclusive resort. And that they put up, you know, put them up as room and board and they got paid and they got to hang out on the beach and do all this stuff. And I thought, you know, that kind of solves all my problems. I don't need a car. I don't need a place to live. Got a job. So I did. I went and I I applied with this company, ended up uh, doing an interview in San Francisco, which the funny thing is they stress how important it was to be this outgoing person and to be able to interact with people. And that was not my strength at all. I've always been you know, to myself and just not a real outgoing person. Even in high school, it was the same thing. I was kind of that loner. 
And I, so it was funny. I had to really sell myself. I, I sat in that interview as a big group interview and they were describing the type of people they were looking for. And so I had to turn this on and pretend to be that person. But that job actually helped me in a lot of ways. One, it helped me out of this situation that, that I was in, this rut that I was in, but it also helped establish this foundation for me, teaching me how to interact with people, which to me is a, was a learned skill. It was something that it was a weakness of mine, and I actually had to learn it. It doesn't come naturally for me. Right, right. So I'll tell you what was a distinct turning point for me in my mind. It was a direct result of that. So uh, while I was there, so I was in the Turks and Caicos Islands, and uh, there was a guest that came to stay there, and she had been there recently for Sports Illustrated swimsuit shoot. Hmm. And so everyone was making a big deal of her, you know, there at the, at the resort. I didn't know who she was. I was just kind of doing my own thing and she would make some sort of smart ass comment and I would make a comment in return. And so we ended up hanging out long story short, after I left club med, she invited me out to New York. And so I went out to New York and you got to figure that I grew up in a really small town, small town, small town thinking, you know, my my mindset was very limited as far as what I thought was possible in this world. My attitude was, yeah, that's for them, for those people, but maybe that's not for me. So going to New York and being exposed to all these different people, I met, you know, famous architects and her whole little circle of friends. And I remember riding in a, a car in the middle of Manhattan, that was my first trip to New York ever. So you got to imagine going from kind of small town kid to the biggest to, city in the world. To the biggest city in the world at the time, I just made this commitment to myself. I said, "My eyes are open now. I see the potential that's out there, and as long as I just kind of mark this as a almost like a benchmark, and just never slide backwards from here, just never go backwards, even if I just make." incremental tiny progress from this point forward you cemented that flag right there right then and there and it was a really distinct moment for me i was really young at the time i think i was still probably only you know 19 years old Mm. and uh but that's something that's always stuck out to me because what i did and i didn't realize it at the time but i raised my standard And that's an important thing. I think, you know, out of everything that we've talked about to this point, that's probably my most important point is you have to raise your standards. You get to that point where you say to yourself, I'm not willing to accept anything less anymore. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew I wanted more. Mm. Knew I wanted more and I knew that I was capable of more. I knew no matter what mistakes that I made that I was capable of more. And I also knew that my mistakes and my past weren't going to determine my future. And I think that was another important distinction because I kept dragging this past and saying, I'm limited to this. This is my ceiling because of this, this, and this, and this. But those all existed in the past. You're drawing your own barriers at that point, and, and you're kind of fencing yourself in. You are. You're, you're, you're creating your own limitations at that point. And the interesting things about the things that have happened in the past, they don't, they don't exist anymore. They're just memories. Right, They may be on paper, they may be in an email or in your mind, but they're just memories. They don't exist anymore. The only thing that's real is right now, you know, right in this present moment. Even the future is not real yet. So I just decided that I wasn't going to let that drag me down. And again, it's not like I snapped my fingers and just released all that baggage. It didn't happen that way. It took me a long time to get past that because... All that negative self-talk about, you know, what I was capable of or thought that I couldn't do or shouldn't do or whatever, that followed me for a long time. People that have followed any of my stories know that I got in this bad car accident when I was in my uh, mid-20s. And uh, at that point, I was already doing a lot of reading, trying to figure out, you know, where I was going with my life. And one thing that I realized at that point was that you know, there was this big gap between where I was and where I wanted to go. And I couldn't figure out how to bridge that gap. It just seemed insurmountable. It was too big. It was like jumping across the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I couldn't imagine it. And when you can't even imagine, you can't see a path, you're never going to have that confidence in it or that belief in yourself in order to go achieve it. And that's essential. You have to believe in it and you have to believe in yourself. So 
for me, it was figuring out how I could create little stepping stones, how I could take experiences that I did have and kind of link those together and form some sort of path, you know, stepping stone by stepping stone. And so at that time, I really didn't have a lot of experience. So I sat with a friend who gave me some guidance and said, look, maybe one thing that you can do is you can get a job in sales. That's something where you can make good money without a lot of experience. You don't don't need a degree. You can learn a lot about business. And so I got a job in sales. And again, which was tough for me, being that I wasn't, you know, this real outgoing extrovert, right, being very introverted. But uh, again, honing that skill, learning how to do that and learning how to interact with people and learning the importance of relationships. And so all those things started to come together. Ultimately, that's what led to the path being in the fitness industry. I married something that I became good at, which I actually became very good at sales, Mm -hmm. even though it didn't come naturally for me. Married that with something that I was passionate about, which was fitness. And that's what I always tell people. If you want to find a career path for yourself, you have to be able to marry those two together. Because if you're passionate about something, but you're not good at it, hmm. pretty low chance of succeeding. I mean, you know, you can you can push on and teach yourself these things, but there probably is a bit of a ceiling You there. can fake it for a little while. Through every adversity is the seed of an equal or greater opportunity. And that always stuck with me. And I was always, you know, quoting that to other people, to friends when they were going through a hard time. That's right when I got into this car accident. And at that point, I was already at a really low point. I was really struggling. I didn't know what I was doing with my career. Lost my job, ran out of money. I was literally down to like 10 bucks. That was all I had. Couldn't pay my rent at the time. And so I got this job in the Bay Area working for a recruiting company that was re- recruiting uh, high-tech engineers, you know, Silicon Valley. Headhunter. Yeah, I was a headhunter. So Silicon Valley was booming at the time. So I got this job and that's, I was driving to go sign my paperwork when I got in this car accident and I needed that job. I literally, like really needed that job. And so I was already in bad shape at the at that point. Uh, my insurance on my car got canceled because I couldn't pay for it. And so here I get in this car accident. So completely break my body, sitting in the hospital, you know, can't work, medical bills piling up, no replacement for my car because I have no insurance. You basically lost everything. Yeah, I was at ground zero. zero. Actually, it, it almost felt worse. I wasn't six feet under, but it felt like I was a couple of feet under. Right. And and everything just seemed hopeless again. Hmm. And the interesting thing is that I'm not going to lie, you know, the first couple of days of really coming out of this fog and, you know, realizing how bad my situation was, it was depressing. And I couldn't sleep at night at all. Every night I would just stare at the ceiling. And so one night as the sun started to come up, I was looking out the window in my room laying in this hospital bed and the sun started coming up. And I remembered that quote, this Napoleon Hill quote, that through every adversity is a seed of an equal or greater opportunity. And it was like this weird light bulb went off in my head. And I said, you know, if that's true, and my situation right now, as bad as it sucks, then maybe something really good can come out of this if I make it. And I really just clung to that, to that idea. And that's what I used to fuel myself through my recovery. And I told myself that, I'm literally writing the story of my own life. And if I were to pick up this book and read the book of James Grage and this chapter in my life where I got into this horrible car accident and everything in my life is a giant mess, how is this story going to read? And am I going to like the way that that chapter reads? Am I going to like it if I read it and it says, James Grage, when shit hits the fan, he gives up, right? He lets it beat him, breaks him down. Hmm. Or is this going to be a comeback story where James Grage, you know, rises to the occasion, you know, dusts himself off and keeps going? I think the light bulb that went off for me was that I just didn't want to fuck around anymore. I didn't want to waste time anymore. And you and I have talked about that in the past. I think that for people is a real pitfall feeling like there's always tomorrow. I can do it tomorrow. I can do it tomorrow. I can do it tomorrow. And yeah, you don't know. You don't know if you have tomorrow. You don't know how much time you have in this world. It's not like 
a lease on a car where you sign this agreement and you know you're going to be here for a set period of time. You have no idea. There's just too many things out there to experience. Forget do, just to experience. I don't, that to me is regret, right? Is feeling like there's so many things that I could have done that I could have taken all these risks and tried these things and maybe failed, maybe succeeded, but I could have gone out there and I could have experienced it. And so to come to the end of my life and realize that I didn't have the balls to do it, that's regret. Yeah. And I don't want to live my life with regrets.